um, before the end of this tenure, we will get the chance to to meet physically, uh, like before, like before the pandemic, so we can know each other more, lah. Okay, so I don't want to take uh so long for my uh my part, my slot. Okay, so basically I will uh tell a little bit about MSS, uh our goals for this tenure and also uh the function of MSS. Okay. So you can see my I'm presenting, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. So uh, we go to the second slide. Okay. So first of all, the background of MSS. Uh, MSS is uh, a society representing all two more than two thousand undergrads undergraduate students of the Kuliah of Economics and Management Sciences. So here you can see, uh, I think the most important part here is you need to know that uh, the numbers of our students is uh, around more than 2,000. So this is how uh, we try from 10 year to 10 year to engage more with them. So we can see uh, maybe like the past election. Okay, we can see the numbers of students that the turnout voters uh, is still, for me, is still low, about 800. So for this tenure, we, we hope that we can engage more with students. Lah. Okay, next, the role of MSS. So this is very important for us to take note. First, we are the liaison between students and Kulia. Any issue regarding uh, the welfare, student affairs and academics. Uh, so we are the representative to uh, channel them to the Kulia. And the second one is to bring the voice of academic students to IIM to the union and IIUM administration. So for now, like I think you guys have already aware that we have the student union. So the student union, basically for any issue, uh, for example, during the flood, yeah. And then uh, any issue regarding welfare. So the IAM Student Union need to communicate with the KBS to know the data of our students that have uh, the difficulty and are in need. Okay, and the last rules. Uh, organize beneficial programs for academic students. Okay. So we go to the next slide. Our goals. So the first goal of MSS for this tenure is to enhance the welfare of academic students. So we aim for zero hunger. Like now we have done a, an initiative to give a food coupon or financial aid to those who are in need during uh, this LIDV period before the semester starts. Okay. And we also plan to upgrade the facilities of our kulia. Okay. Uh, uh, I want you guys to know that our HQ have, we have a new HQ at a level one of our kuliah uh, in the area in front of the PLA, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, if you guys come from ICOL, you come from ICOL, so the, uh, yeah, near from, near from there. Okay, so we plan to upgrade to have our student lunch. And now we already have a new musola for brothers and also can be the multiple Hall. Okay, and then to provide uh, a necessary study material for students and also to uh, establish uh, the, our MSS support system. So that's for the first, goal, first goals. Okay, so the second goal is to develop students' soft skills and growth to meet the demand of industry. So uh, for this goal, we plan to uh, initiate a KPI, Key Performance Index for every program. So we want to evaluate, to have a proper evaluation uh, on how to measure the effectiveness of our program. Okay. So, and then to empower the subcommittees to give them more chance to show their talent, to unleash what they have, their ability. And then we want to have a workshop on skills that are beneficial for students for their development and uh, later on, 
for their uh, for their career. Okay, and then uh, we want to implement cannabis routine. Okay, so next to initiate effective information dissemination. So uh, like just now I said that there are about two hundred thousand students, but somehow when we do an initiative or we have our uh, maybe uh, something like we need the response from students regarding the welfare or any issue, somehow we cannot get reach the number of all students. So this go the, the third goal is very important for us to increase our engagement. So the first the first thing first, we want to empower the Canvas TV, our YouTube channel. So we want uh to to use this uh, the only platform uh for us to do our program in terms of uh, live or content in YouTube. The second one to upgrade MSS website. So for now we are working for have uh, to have a, a shopping page in our website and also a lot of more development and our in our website. Okay. So next, utilize all platform wisely. So I hope you guys uh, for now you already know all our platform. We have our website um, and also our Telegram channel, Instagram and Twitter. So make sure you follow all of that. Okay. Okay. The fourth goals to unite the cannabis community as one city. So basically, these goals focus to unite all the local, international lecturers and staff as a one society. Yeah. So first, we want to encourage collaboration among account. So we, I encourage all of you to do such program that that need collaboration with one another. Okay. The second one, we will be having a lot of sharing from lecturers, okay? And then uh, close the gap between local and international, okay? The fifth goals for MCS, to build and maintain connections with other universities and alumni. So, okay, so first session, session with alumni and maintain existing connections that the past 10 years have already done for it. And then we will initiate more engagement with other kuliah in IIUM. Okay, that's all five goals of MCS. I hope you guys will jot down, eh, take note all the important uh, things uh, in our goals for this 10 year. Okay, and then make sure that uh, your program will lead will uh will lead to this all these goals and if you guys have any uh need more clarification i think your respective chairperson can explain to you more lah. okay and the last part of my presentation is my hopes for for you guys okay so the first one i hope that you guys are proud to be part of MCS. Even that we we cannot have a physical program like before, uh, even the situation is different, but you still feel that you are belong to MCS. Okay. Uh, okay. The second one is to aim to be a Khalifa. Uh, this is very important because uh, I want you to aim to be a Khalifa because one day, I believe that all of you become, will become one that uh, will benefit the community. Okay, so use MCS here, the journey in MCS uh, of your learning process to know everything, how you want to deal with people, how you want to make changes uh, to the society. Okay, uh, first one for yourself to be part of MCS. To, be, to have your confidence. Second one, uh, for you to be a Khalifa, to benefit other people, uh, to be specific now, to benefit all can my students. And the third one, be a good team player. Okay. 
So uh, it's uh, very important for us to take note that uh, in the online mode, uh, the communication is very important. You need uh, to have a good communication with your team member, with your higher up, lecturers, and also the, advi the advisors to make sure that uh, we can have the same understanding on what we are doing. Okay, and be committed uh, because uh, be committed and also who's, uh, have a husnuzan among, uh, among, among you guys. Okay, so I think from all, all these three, uh, first for yourself, second uh, for you and other people, okay, the reason why I hope, I mean, uh, the, the relation for you to other people and then uh, the third one uh, for you and your team member so what are the missing one here okay so all of this is the relation for you uh, you guys with uh, the people and don't forget the the most important relation is to Allah SWT. so I hope you guys maintain a good connection with Allah be a good Muslim uh, and, and always make sure that you fulfill your responsibility towards your God. Okay. Okay. I think that's all from me. Okay. Like I said, just like I said before, don't forget to follow our social media, Instagram, Twitter, Canvas TV, and also our website. Okay. Uh, that's all from me. I pass back to Sister Mariam Jamila. All right. Thank you so much, Brother Zahid, for the wonderful speech. For your information, I've known Brother Zahid since CFS, Center for Foundation Studies. I must say that um, he has all the characteristics of a quality leader. He's an integrity leader with vision and mission. Thus, uh, I am firmly convinced that we are all in good hands. Inshallah, okay, Brother Zahid? All right. Now it's the time to meet the executive committees of the MSAS for the year 2020-2021. Starting off with the president, Brother Zahid. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum again. So my name is Muhammad Zahid Muslim bin Jasmani. You can call me Zahid. Uh, I'm from from Department of Accounting, student of accounting, and currently I'm a second, eh, third year, second semester. Okay, and my hope uh, for you guys, I hope that we can work together, even of all the barriers that we had now, we can work together and uh, I hope to see you guys uh, later, physically in our kulia. Okay. The Vice President one, Brother Rafiq. Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot open my camera because uh, it's kind of not working right now. But um, thank you for coming. My name is Muhammad Rafi Shahmi, Muhammad Sahimi. You can call me Rafiq. Um, I'm the Vice President one for MSTAS 2021. I am from the Department of Bachelor of Economics, um, specializing in international economics, inshallah. And um, I am in my third year, first semester. Uh, my hope is that, uh, like what Zahid said in his slides, we aim to be a team player, aim to be a Khalifa, aim to better ourselves in this council and secretariat that we join. So I hope everyone uh, have a great time uh, joining the count, okay? Thank you. All right, so next, the Vice President to Sister Zulaikha. Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Sister Zulaikha Zibarudin. I'm currently third year, second semester, next semester. Uh, I'm from the <coughs> Department of Business Administration, majoring in senior courses. So my hope for the senior is I hope we can work together, hand in hand for the school and the student itself. And also, then you guys enjoy your journey throughout this tenure. Thank you. Okay, next, the Secretary General, Sister Fahima.
Maybe we can go to the next one because she is having internet connection All problems. Right. So next, the assistant secretary one, Sister Arifa. Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Arifa binti Muhammad Rafiq Mubay and I am your assistant secretary one from the Department of Economics. I hope all of you will be able to give your cooperation despite being in a remote and teaching learning mode and hope you guys could enjoy your time this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sister Arifa. And next, the Assistant Secretary to Brother Halim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdul Halim bin Hashim, uh, Assistant Secretary to, to MSS, and I'm in the Department of Economics. And my hope for this tenure is that uh, even though we are struggling right now, but we could help each other out and gain the best of our time from our experience this tenure and also be a leading example to other kuliah. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, financial control one, Brother Ayman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So my name is uh, Ahmad Ayman Faiz bin Kamaluddin and I'm uh, financial controller one coming from Department of uh, Business, uh, business administration majoring in finance. So my hope for this senior is that we, uh, since this is a second year, we are going through the COVID-19, right? So I hope uh, the online program for this senior will be better compared to last year. And then uh, I hope fundraising for every account uh, will be better also. Thank you. All right, and lastly, the financial controller to Brother Arif. Assalamualaikum everyone. I am Arif Zinedine Mehdu Nazim. You can call me Arif. I am the financial controller to of MSS from Department of Accounting. So my hope is nothing much, but I hope each of us can give our very best towards our respective accounts and MSS as a whole. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, generally, there are four councils in MSES, which are led by three gentlemen and a lady. We start from Bachelor of Accounting Council, led by Brother Rafiki Akmal. Brother Rafiki is a third year first semester student from BACC. Next, we have Bachelor of Business Administration Council, led by Sister Nurul Mazlina, a second year second semester student. Next, we also have Bachelor of Economics Council, led by Brother Muhammad Hamiru Akbar. He is also a second year, second semester student. And lastly, Bachelor of Islamic Finance Council, led by Brother Lukman Mustakim, a third year, second semester student. And also, not forgetting the secretaries in MSES, there are five of them. The first one is Da'wah and Training Secretary, or also known as DNT led by Brother Muhammad Iqbal Wajdi. Now he is in his second semester, second year from the Department of Islamic Finance. Next, we also have Welfare Secretariat led by Brother Muhammad Hafi Ikwan. He is a third year, first semester student from Economics Department. Other than that, we also have International Secretariat led by Brother Maisan Abdul Hamid a second year, second semester student from BBA. Plus, sports secretariat is also included, which led by Sister Aida Liana. She's from Department of Accounting and a second year, second semester student. And lastly, the one who is responsible to spread the information under our kuliah named Information and Publication Secretariat, led by Sister Adini. Sister Adini is a third year, second semester student, and she's from Department of Islamic Finance. So, wow, that's such an amazing lineup for MSES this tenure. Personally, I am very excited for this tenure and also this program. But then I know you guys are listening to a lot of things today. So why not we take a 10 minutes break and resume with the games. You can do whatever you want to do, but please come back here after 10 minutes. So see you at... Um, 1020.
All right, time's up. Welcome back to my Kulia, my home induction day. Moving to our ice breaking station, interesting prizes are awaiting the winners. So I hope everyone in this room will be participating and get ready with the games. I will pass the floor to Brother Rafiki and Brother Hafik for the ice breaking session. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you, Sister Maria. Um, I hope everyone are doing well and also uh, staying safe at wherever you are right now. Um, hi, my name is Muhammad Hafiq, but you can call me Hafiq. I am the chairperson for Welfare Secretariat 2021. Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Rafiki Akmal bin Shamsun Rizam. You guys can call me Rafiki and I am the chairperson of Bachelor of Accounting Council, BACC. Okay. So today, we would like to make this induction more interesting for all of you. So we have planned some uh, question for we to conduct in Kahoot quiz. So it's like a pop quiz, but don't worry, this pop quiz would not include in your carry mark. Okay, um, so we have, we have, the quiz consists of 25 questions across six categories. They are MSAS history, department subjects, MSAS structure, academic structure, general IIUM question, and also some acronyms related to IIUM. All right, guys. So this Kahoot quiz isn't just a quiz. It's actually a competition. So what, what's the difference? Well, with every competition, there's a prize. So the prize that we'll, we'll be giving to the fifth place up to first place winners are cash prize. Yep, you heard that correctly, cash price. So, fifth place winners, fifth place winner will be getting five ringgit. Fourth place will be getting ten ringgit. Third place will be getting fifteen ringgit. Uh, second place, uh, twenty, and finally first place, uh, thirty ringgit. I repeat, fifth place five ringgit. Fourth place ten. Third place fifteen. Second place uh, twenty, and first place thirty ringgit. So. Before you think about think about your guess answers, you might want to consider and bear in mind that each question can be worth up to one ringgit and twenty cents. So, if you guys want to win, do it properly. All right. So uh, I can guarantee you the questions are quite easy, not too difficult. So uh, all the best to you guys. Uh, so before we begin, I would like to remind you guys: you guys can use any nicknames that you want as long as it is appropriate. But at the same time, please include your metric number in your name as well. So for example, let's say your nickname is Roti Boy. So Roti Boy, metric number 1822246, maybe. Uh, this is for the sake of identification later on when you guys are claiming your prizes, all right? So I can see some smiles and excited faces over here. I'm excited as well. So let's begin registering. So, okay, link. what you have to do is just um, uh, go to kahoot.it or the link has provided in the chat box. All you have to do is just key in the game pin, which is uh, presented in the screen, 5149098. I can see some K-pop stars entering our quiz today. Come on, guys. All right, so we have around 216 participants. So do expect some tough competitions, but it's 25 questions, so a lot of opportunities to go up and down, all right? Don't worry. Um, Ooh, I, I can see Trump here. <laughs> all right, uh, unfortunately, guys, we have to remove names without, um, without metric number. Yeah. Otherwise, we cannot give any uh, prize in case you guys do win.
if you guys have any problem do let us know if you guys like can't join like you guys don't know how to Alright, let's give it about three minutes or so and then we'll start. Yeah. Remember guys, uh, if you guys mistakenly um, put in nickname without metric number, you guys can exit and then re-enter with the new nickname. I think I'm COVID here. <laughs> you guys are creative, man. <laughs> Maybe we can expect some social distancing next. Sure. <laughs> Come on, guys. All right, so let's take until 10 29 and then we close the registration and then we'll start. Okay, so 20, 10 29, that's two more minutes. Come on, guys, you have to be quick. As I said earlier, you guys don't have to be worried because you would not include in your carry mark. This is just for fun, fun okay? <laughs> Alright, one more minute, guys. Okay, it's 10.29, so I think, Afik, you can start. Yeah, let's start. Alright, get ready, guys. Okay. guys. Start your engine, guys. Three, two, one. Okay, for the first question, when was the latest MSAS general election held? Any guesses? December 2020. All right, so Tui is currently leading. All right, second question. The president of MSES 1920, who's also a subcommittee in this tenure as well. I think it's Mirza Batrisha. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so it is Amin Farhan. All right, Zoe is still leading. How many social media platform does MSAS have in total? It's a tricky one. Think properly, guys. So um, just now, um, but as I hit put four, there's actually one more, which is Telegram. So I can understand uh, the confusion, but yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, students from which department contributed the highest vote during the latest MSS election for 2021 session? So ENM, BFIN, BACC, BBA. One of these yeah. four. And the correct answer is that's a little fight, it's not with finance. You guys can check it out at our Instagram um, highlights. An account receivable is also called a... Yep, the answer is lender. Congratulations. Right, next question. The Islamic version of higher purchase contract is called. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I if, you speak, if you speak Arabic, then this is your <laughs> this is your question. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so it is Al Ijara Thuma Al Bay by Bitama Najil is uh, debt financing. Wait, no, sorry, okay, we have one eight one four nine two nine. All right. What can be best described for standard deviation? Hmm. Variable predicator Pre predictors. All right, one eight one four nine two nine still leading. Well done. Okay, next question. Three subordinates receiving orders from one superior can be best described as hmm. unity of command, direction, order, or equity. Most of you got it right, so it is unity of command. All right, next question. One eight one four nine two nine still leading. Wow. Yes. 
seven player just hit answers. How many accounts are there in MSES? Hmm. There's our accounting if you don't know. <laughs> I think the clue is already given earlier in the Korea. <laughs> You were actively listening, so I think it would be a problem. Okay, most of you answered nine. I don't know which one you forgot, but it is ten. All right, so moving on. Tenth question. Still a lot of opportunities to catch up, guys. Head of councils and secretariats are called A. Councilman, President, Chairperson, Head of Council. The correct answer. All right. Congratulations. We have 141. Wow, Nick is climbing Nick. up. Nick. How many financial controllers do we do MSES have in general? Have our Ayman Faiz and also our brother Arif. Next question. All right, so question: Who is our current vice president? To hmm. I think it's Rafi Shami. I'm pretty. Rafi Shami, yeah, Rafi Shami. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rafi. <laughs> The picture that is just to, you know, only to put you off. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well done. The like the uh, still have to be like. Sorry. Rafi Shami is our first, first vice president. All right. Next question. How many credit hours are given for department required subjects? So four to zero point five and three. Which one of these? I hope there's no more any wrong answer. <laughs> okay, I'm so okay. surprised. Yep, correct. So three. Congratulations, Nick. Still leading. All right. So the next Which are the following? It's is not a kuliah required subject. <laughs> yeah, it's financial management one. All right, next question. We're 15, so 10 questions away from the end. All right, General, which department has greatest credit hours to fulfill before graduation? What does the picture have to do anything with the question? <laughs> the correct answer is Yep, BACC with 151 credit hour. All right, still the Good same luck, first and second. <laughs> Thanks. How many Kulia required courses do students need to complete before entering any department? Hmm. You guys can quickly open your academic structure. <laughs> The 
the right answer is eight. eight. So we have 12 cooler required subjects, eight of which needs to be taken before you enter the department. All right, next question. Which of the following Kulia is not located on the Gomba campus? Engineering, Law, Allied Health Sciences, Architecture. The correct answer is I sign I health and sciences. Which of the following is IIUM's mission? The correct answer is Islamization of knowledge. It's related with IIUM? I don't know. I'm wrong. The answer is triple I C E, guys. Leading the way is the just sort of tagline, nothing to do with yeah. mission. So triple ICE goes uh, Islamization of knowledge, uh, internalization, integration, and CE, comprehensive excellence. So that is the mission statement of IAUM. People are tricked by the leading the way. <laughs> but I know IIUM always lead the way. Right. How many kuliah are there in IIUM Gomba campus? Hmm. Let us see the correct answer. It's A. So the answer is A, guys. So we have N H leading. Okay, 20th questions, five questions to go. How many Kulia are there when IIM first started operating? Whoa. Guys, can Google if you have time. So four is the answer. Ooh, all right. Next question. What do seconds stand then. for? Wow. <laughs> Section of council. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> the correct answer is secretariat and council. All right, one eight one and Najwa trying to regain the throne. So, what is MSUS? What does it stand for, guys? Make sure to really check the spelling. The correct answer is Economics and Management Science Society. And H. All right. I call what is does I call me. Abdullah Ibn Ahmad Ibrahim, Anwar Ibrahim, <laughs> Ahmad Irfan. <laughs> so which one you guys? Anwar Ibrahim. The, the name sounds familiar, yeah? I forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For some reason it does. Yeah. And the correct answer is Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Law. All right, second last question. The name Selpet comes from? Mm. For those who come from Selpet, I think it's a bonus for you maybe, if you guys know. The 
Insight on the Center for Languages and Pre-University Academic Development. Okay, and here we are for the last question. Koet is a kulia for hmm. Education, early childhood daycare, hmm. electronic design. Education. All right, so the winners. Third place goes to ESF one eight one. Okay. Second Next one place. is Najwa. And first place, first place drum goes roll, please. to NH one nine one eight six eight two. All right. And then the fourth place, one eight one nine zero, and also Sauha fifth place. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, for the winners. Uh, I would like to congratulate to all the winners. Do stay calm while waiting for our financial controller to approach you for your cash prize. All right. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for your participation and congratulations, all the winner. Hope you guys had fun and know a little bit more about IAUM, MSS, and general topics. All right. For so, those who have lost this opportunity, don't worry because losing is the new winning. Ooh, all right <laughs> so um we're done here again thank you very much for your participation very happy to see you, you guys smiling and all those uh, very excited faces so as we're done here uh i think i would like to sign off and let us pass the ceremony back to our uh, mc mariam all right, thank you, Brother Rafiki and Hafi. It was good to see you guys smiling and laughing while playing the, the Kahoot game. Okay, all right, so we are going to have our next agenda. Next, I would like to invite our Secretary General, Sister Fahima, for the Secretary Briefing. Please welcome. Sister Fahima, are you there? Okay, so Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. It's a pleasure to meet all of you and I'm sorry that I cannot attend the interview session before this because I have some sort of internet connection. So basically, my name is Fahima bin Himalaza and I am your Secretary General Ansar 2021. So uh, basically, I am in Islamic Finance and I am currently in my third year second semester. So I hope that all of you can give your all your attention to me because this slot is uh, quite important for all of you because in each one of you are going to be a part of managing a program. So when you understand on how to uh, how the secretary will flow, then you can understand how to manage the program. So basically, what a secretary should do. First of all. A secretary needs to understand your program, so because uh, he need to he or he need to write all the details in the proposal and report. So when you become a part of the committee of the program, when you want to do a planning, you need to make sure that uh, you have the details. You know what is the details of your program, so that your know, secretary can fill in, in all the details in the proposal and report. Then, uh, okay, uh, if you are not holding any position as a secretary or even you do not interest at, uh, at all on become a secretary, uh, this uh, secretary role need to be taken up by all of you because it is really important.
can all of you hear? Yes. 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 Uh, I'm not stuck yet. Okay. Uh, I continue. Uh, so then, uh, a secretary, a secretary need to follow the deadline. So basically, a proposal need to be sent a month before your proposed date. So if you are going to manage a program, you need to do a meeting uh, a long way before a month of your proposed date. And the, another deadline is for the report, which is within the two weeks after your program. So the last element that a secretary needs to have is always be precise because every little thing in the proposal and report will be taken off. Um, it's important for their approval and verification purposes. Okay, now here are our proposal flow. And like I said before, a proposal needs to be sent a month before your proposal date. So if you look at here, we have preparation, draft submission, verification, final submission, and approval letter. So you can see that these are very complicated procedures. So if you are going to plan a program, so it is really important to do an early planning. So a proposal, uh, okay, the things that you need to send for a proposal is proposal for approval and program proposal form PDF. So these two things we don't worry. Uh, secretary MTAS already give a secretary kit to each of the secretary's accounts. So if you are going to become a secretary program, don't worry, the details and template are already given. So, so for preparation, uh, you know what you are going to do. Then you need to submit a draft submission to the PIC. It means that person in charge of each account, which is me, Mr. Arifa, and Brother Halim. Uh, the secretary of MSS. Then, when all of us have agreed with the proposal, then you may proceed to get verification, which is me, by the I9, our financial controller one, and by the Zahid. Our president need to check all these things to get a verification from your student advisor. Later, then you can have your final submission, which is you need to submit your proposal to the North. Uh, which is the secretary of our associate, uh, Prof. Musi Hassani, our deputy dean of student, uh, of student development and community engagement. Okay, I know that you won't remember all of this, but I just give an, uh, as an explanation of the flow so that uh, if you are going to get any position later, you will not get short at all. So lastly, uh, the officer will send the proposal to the, our deputy dean and dean to check on the proposal. Then if they agree, you will receive an approval letter. Then you will use the approval letter to continue your program or get any sponsorship. So uh, I hope that this will give some light to you if, if you are being a part of managing program. So for this one, the proposal just seems like the as a proposal flow. Uh, but lastly, there is just office acceptance. It means that uh, your report has no, no problem at all. You have the receipt, you have a clean, uh, what is your input of the program, and, and you have to provide uh, the proof that you have done your program. It's no problem at all. It means that the office will accept your program, and it is the end of your. Uh, and of your job as a committee on program, section, program report form, PRF. And then another two things you need to submit by your financial controller, which is financial report form and the investment letter. So now you know that when you conduct a program, there are a lot of important things that you need to. Uh, get ready and need to provide when you, your, there are your chairperson, there are your main board that already understand this procedure and let's say if you are going to receive this responsibility, don't go read this offer and inshallah
can be done by programming. Here at Manet is the planning program for the whole tenure. This has been having two to plan, which is a fully online Manet and a hybrid Manet. So basically, fully online is uh, all programs conducted online, such as virtual talk, online competition, online sharing, online sharing session, and many more. So for this one, we, all of us already know how it is going to be done. Like, and if things are getting better, we do have a better plan, which is the hybrid, is a combination of online and physical program. So we have planning for physical activities if things get better in the future. So don't worry if you're being a like we do have a planning program for you and uh, inshallah, you will not do it when you are. Okay, so for fully on a program, we already planned 60 programs, which is from presidential. We have eight programs. The ACC, we have eight programs. The BDAC, we have eight programs. The NT, we have four. Sports, we have three. Welfare, we have four. In football, we have five. And for international, we have five. Uh, if you look, the number doesn't represent the content of your program at all. Because like that, they have uh, the highest number of programs because they do a lot of online programs. Uh, but uh, uh, I mean like uh, online sharing session and so on. But for sports, they have three because they have uh, three big events, which is a big competition. So later, uh, your sports committee, uh, for sports committee, you know what you are going to do after this. Okay, for hybrid program, there are no difference uh, from the fully online. We just add up some physical uh, activities or maybe uh, to convert their online program into physical. So now we are planning on having 69 programs, which is from presidential, we have eight. The ACT, we have eight. The DAC, we have eight. Max, we have 11. IFC, we have eight. The NT, we have four. Sports, we have four. Welfare, we have six. Uh, in Popa, we have five, and internationally, we have seven programs. So now, here are the highlights of the Almanac. So like for presidential, we have Carol Week, and Press Challenge, and Refest. This three uh, event is the annual event that already been done from this year's tenure. So we are just going to continue this event. So if Things are not going to get better. We have we do have a plan to conduct this three event online, but we really hope that uh, another semester we are all of us are able to go back to the campus and we will conduct it in future. So we just pray for the best. Uh, however, all secret and already have a lot of interesting events. For us, so from the NT, we have Amsa's features. From for our cap competition, and lastly, from the ACT, we have the fun and fun session. So, we have some high types of the program that you are the friend that's not a part of that. So lastly, for me, uh, even though we are from, from the, another city, we are such a one big family, even if you are not going to handle that kind of program, please do support each program and promote to all your friends. That's all for me. Thank you. Sorry for any inconvenience. Thank you, Sister Fahima, for the insightful talk. Anyway, I hope you guys are still with us. This is going to be the last slot for this session. We will move to the special slot that's called the Sponsorship Talk. The, the one that will be our guest speaker today is such an amazing person. She is Sister Salsabila Manan. For your information, Sister Salsabila is currently a member of IIUM Student Union Public Relations Office and also was the Vice President one for MSES 2019-2019. She was also the program manager of MSES Challenge 2019, 
where she brought the program to an international level. Wow. She also collaborated with the Department of Higher Education under the Ministry of Education. So now let's welcome Sister Salsabila. Uh, thank you to MC, Sister Mariam, is it? Uh, thank you so much for your introduction. So I hope everyone can hear me. You guys can hear me well. Okay, is everything okay? Good. Huh? All right, uh, Sarkwa Tlaburakatu and good afternoon. Okay, first of all, uh, not really an amazing person, but thank you for such an introduction. All right, um, I am honored to be here today. Thank you to, we have um, Brother Ayman and also Sister, uh, Sister Arifah. So they invited me for this slot. And also thank you for the tenure, uh, this tenure, present, uh, this tenure 21 and 22 session. All right, uh, first of all, Give yourself a round of applause for being part of a 21-22 session presidential secretariat and also uh, MSES as a whole. Yeah, I know. I can see you guys clapping. So I'm imagining you guys clapping from your house, from the comfort of your... Anyway, you guys are staying. So I hope that you guys are having a great, uh, you know, a life currently doing uh, during this pandemic crisis. It's uh, unprecedented and all. And I really hope that you guys can benefit from this session. Um, so if you guys want to ask any questions, you know, just just uh, turn on the mic uh, for the um, for the one organizer, you know, you can just let anyone turn on the mic. I would appreciate it if we can have a two way session because only then I will be able to you know feel like we are talking um, with, uh, I would say around 217. So I would really love to speak to all of you. Okay, so feel free to turn on the mic and how you see you want to fit in, you want to ask questions, okay? All right, uh, so I'm going to share my slides. Um, wait, a, hold on a moment here. Yeah? Uh, okay, uh, can you guys all see my slide? All right, I'm going to assume you can see. Okay, so what is uh, sponsorship? Describe sponsorship in one word. Any anyone wants to turn on their mic and just give anything, you know, you can describe sponsorship in, in one word. Raising funds. Okay, raising funds, that's good. Uh any more? Anyone? Maybe two or three more person before we Funding. proceed. Funding, okay, that's good. Yes, uh more. Engagement. Dang, dang. Engagement. Okay. All right. So the three of you guys made a good point. Funding, engagement, and also. Another one, what is it again? You say just now? Faiza? Faiza, right? Raising funds. Yes, raising funds. Okay, yes, basically that's it. So in sponsorship, you have to expect that you won't always get what you want. You achieve, you targeted 20,000, but at the end of the day, you get 10,000. You targeted 5,000, at the end of the day, you get nothing. So this is like basically, a, I would say, a position where the only time that you know you reach it is when you achieve a target. If you don't achieve, it's as if you have done nothing. Am I right? Although you have worked tire tirelessly, very exhausted, you, you basically drained out all of your energy. But at the end of the day, if you don't get anything, it's as if you, you did nothing. So this, this is the most important thing that you need to understand with sponsorship. It, it requires a lot of hard work. It is tiring. It is exhausting. But once you get it, you will actually feel very satisfied. And if you get more and you achieve more, that's when you, you know that all of your tireless pursuit is actually meaningful. So again, it is not easy to be a sponsorship. So today I'm going to put more pressure to you because I know that this is pandemic, uh, it's unprecedented. So I've never been raising any funds during the pandemic uh, or any unprecedented crisis ever. But um, maybe I can give you my insights that I have seen what's happening currently. And there are actually few key points that you can use it as your advantages. So I hope that this session will be insightful to you, okay? All right, so um, this is basically very general. You have to first understand what is organizers and what is uh, sponsors. So you have to know a uh, mismatch. You have to understand what is the function of the organizers and what are the function of uh, sponsors. So the only way for you to win is for you to find this mismatch. mismatch. What do they want? Okay, 
So as you can see, the first one is organizers. We promise to pr promote them accordingly. So this is what we say, like, uh, and, uh, not illegally, not illegally, but I would say uh, a contract where it is binded without you having to sign anything. Okay. So you have to understand that as an organizer, you want to, you want something from them. And the truth is they want something from you. So you have to find what are the key points? What are these things that you can attract them with? What can you give the benefit to them? So the first one is an organizer. You have to promise to promote them accordingly. Uh, what you see suitable, for example, if they want a longer project, they want a goodwill, they want 10 years project with you. So you have to attract them through this way. Okay. So for this one, I will explain further, but it actually depends on what kind of companies, what kind of uh, organizations you are looking to approach. And then promise to give them platform to promote themselves. At the end of the day, it's all about promoting. It's all about, uh, in, in Malay, kita kata mencari publicity, yes. For them, no matter how big the company is, you have to know that they are growing companies. So over the years, 10 years, uh, 20 years in the future, what they need from you is to promote them. So as long as they can reach a, tiger, a, a wider target market segment, so that is beneficial for you. Okay, So you have to understand that companies, no matter how big they are, they always need to promote themselves because they are growing. Okay, And then the third is benefit differs according to the packages offered. So this one also I will go into more details, examples of um, packages that we can offer to the organization. And sponsors. Okay, so when we approach uh, the organization or any company for sponsors, first, they expect to gain something from their investment. They don't want to invest uh, in you 10,000K and then for you just to do a three days program without anything, right? So you have to understand this. What are the gain from their investment? So it can be in any monetary value, but, uh, monetary value, for example, maybe they can get money as well, or maybe they can reach more uh, audiences more people are aware of what their organization is, or maybe just maybe a, a publicity for them, just just a normal publicity. So you have to understand that before you approach them. And this is very, uh, very important. The second and the third one is they expect to have good relationship, goodwill. You know, when you learn accounting back in uh, CFS, you always hear about goodwill, 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 right? So this is very, very important. Because it's, it's like you are getting into a relationship with someone. For example, you have known a person for, let's say, two years. And then you want to engage. And then you want to get married. Okay, tell me, which one is more uh, confident? Which one are you more confident with? The one that you have been in a relationship for six years? Or the one you have been in a relationship in two years? Of course, two years, right? Of course, six years, sorry. So, see, um, longer relationship gives you more confidence. So, this is what they want from you. They don't want a one-off relationship. If they want a one-off relationship, better for them to just invest in CSR or any, you know, charity. So it's one-off. So when you approach a sponsor, you have to try to make it sustainable as long as possible. And you have to make them confident that your relationship with them is binding, although we don't have any contract or anything. So this is the most important thing the negotiator during the moment uh, when you want to bind the contract. So just don't send uh, some person, anyone, you know, okay, we just send uh, A, for example. But A is not a good negotiator. He does not know how, he or she does not know how to negotiate with the other uh, organization. So it's very important for you to find the good, uh, not to say good or bad, but more towards understanding on how the negotiation should be. Okay, and of course, one sustainability. So I would give you one example for my um, event, right? I was the uh, program manager for IIM MSAS International Challenge 2019. It was very hard for me to convince people, um, especially the sponsors and even the top management of the university because I have first to get their approval. So it's very hard for me to, to uh, make them convinced that this program can, do, can run international. So what I did was that um, you know, I see back on my first year during, we have this one organization, uh, Finance Accreditation Agency, FAA. They sponsored us 3,000, basically gold uh, during the time. And it was, um, it was quite a high amount of money, considered, considered that we are looking for 3,500 something. But um, what I did was that I tried to uh, go back to this person and I tried to encourage them that if they give more uh, investment, I will be able to 
give them more projects in the future, which um, I would say, unfortunately, given the, the COVID pandemic, we are unable to do any, you know, progressive projects. But this is one of the examples of what uh, I did. I approached those who already contributed and I made sure that my relationship with them is sustainable. Okay, so it includes everything actually. It includes just having a cup of coffee one morning and then, you know, just talk about what the issue is going on, how the finance accreditation and finance uh, financial institution works, what are the students demanding. So you just make sure that you are in constant, uh, constant engagement. So you, if you have any other projects, um, as a except then the one that you are asking for sponsorship, for example, you have career week, you have um, sports, you have any any more any anything else just invite them invite them as participants invite them uh, just you know just to just to see how the event is going so that the person feel important okay this is what we want we want continuous relationship okay this is the key all right so how to capture this is what i mentioned understand the nature of your program so this is very 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 important for example uh, uh nature we have a lot we have is it csr csr for example we have um under welfare secretariat we have um you know kasi siswa we have buddhi siswa we visited schools we help those uh, charity in need so this is all csr and then we have intellectual discourse intellectual discourse for example ancestor challenge where we have a group of people discussing of current issues and then having a big competition make it you know, make it it's a big deal, although it's just a, although it's just a discussion, but you know, uh, it's an intellectual discourse program. And then we have a talk, a simple meeting, basically. Also, you can just ask for sponsorship. For example, if you want to make an annual general meeting as grand as you want, you can actually ask for sponsors. And you know, you try to, you try to uh, attract the audiences by giving them publicities, media. So there's a lot of things you can do. Don't, don't, Never limit yourself to what are the possibilities of the other person giving you sponsors. And then is it annual program or just one off or is it periodically? So this is very important because when I say um, sustainable, when I say continuous, as much as you want continuous uh, confidence, money from them, they want a continuous relationship where they can keep getting on publicities as the year goes by. Because people, students are all getting uh, older, we are all getting married and going to have children. We are, we are going to graduation soon. So what they want from you is that how are uh, how confident are they, they that, for example, if you have another project, big project, they will be involved. So this is um, what you have to understand. So um, animal program usually gets a sponsorship, um, I would say, much faster and also you know for the the the, the other part they will be more confident but as for one off ridiculously it will be a bit hard but not impossible in fact every companies every organizations they have this um csr every every um company organization doesn't matter they are non-profit or revenue generated you have to know that they have a csr budget because they want to you know rather than paying for taxes might as well they pay and invest for something else and they get tax exemption. So this is the key. When you want to invite for sponsors, one of the benefit that we can give to them is tax exemption. Okay, so this is actually um, helps them. Uh, so they can not to say uh, can get away from, from taxes. No, they can never run away from taxes. But this allocation of money, they can use to invest and gain publicity. So if you are a company, what, what would you do, right? Obviously, better invest than, than, than paying taxes. So that is the money that we are trying to capture. Okay, that is, the, that is the allocation of budget that we are trying to capture when we find for sponsors. We give them tax exemption, we give them publicity, what more they want, what more they want. So we try to reach um, as much as uh, agreement, you know, if it's let's say higher, you go for heavier or more, we say bounded relationship. Can lagi banyak benda lagi tinggi the worth the worth it, it's more worthy. For example, it goes uh, it goes above twenty thousand. Then you know that you are more that these sponsors are more heavier to you than those who actually just give one thousand, just give two thousand. Okay, all right. So nature nature is very very important. You have to uh, understand first. For example, I will give an example. Intellectual discourse. We have MSAS challenge. So I know. Okay. Those who are interested in um, whether, you know, being part of the uh, partners or 
whether they are being sponsored, they are interested in finance, business, economics, accounting. So maybe we can find those in financial institutions. Maybe we can go find those in banking institutions or maybe think tank, you know, to, to attract as, 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 as partners. Don't just go to non-profit. Let's say you go for yayasan that, that, that only served for uh, poor and needy students. Don't go for that. You will just waste your energy. You have to know your audience. You have to know who you can target and capture your sponsors. If you know, then you are in good hands. Okay. For example, if it's CSR, you want to help uh, those in your community. You want to help those who are poor, very in need. For this one, CSR, it's a bit lenient. You can go to anywhere because any companies, any organizations, they have uh, sponsorship uh, for CSR. What is more, I would say, the, 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 the hardest event for you to capture is um, event that includes trip. For example, we have trip to Japan, right? Uh, last two years. Wow, I'm already old. So last two years, we have a trip to Japan. So it's very hard for us to find sponsors because how are, we, how are we going to attract the sponsors? What are the benefits that they will get apart from publicity? Because we are going to attract participants in the Japan, right? So this is where, you know, you have to understand um, whether it's easy for you to get sponsorship, whether it's hard for you to get sponsorship so that you can come up with a plan that uh, address all this risk. Few programs, you just need... Uh, two months, for example, CSR, you need just need two months, you can already get 10,000 because even Datuk Datuk, Datin Datin, uh, Tan Sri all want to give like 1,000, 2,000, you know, because, because it's, it's charity. But when it involves something that is more, you know, you cannot actually see the benefit. Orang kata gara dan tak tahu what they can get. So these are the events that are much, much more harder for you to get sponsorship. So these are the events where you need more time you might need one year. You might need two years if, let's say, it's, it's 100,000 um, ringgit. So, you know, you have to, again, know your, know your nature. So, and then when you know your nature, then you have the target audiences. How many target audiences? Small, medium, or big amount. For example, you want uh, 5,000, 5,000 K. Of course, if you approach a, a company, if you want a higher a higher amount, it requires presentation, usually a presentation uh, of your proposal. And then you have to present what, 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 what they can get, those kind of things. So if you are targeting small, then you might need a small effort, but you are targeting big amount, then, you know, um, high, what do we call it in, in finance? Um, higher risk, higher returns. Yes, that is very true. So higher risk, higher returns. So you might need more time more energy, but you can either get nothing or get a lot. For example, um, when I uh, asked for sponsorship for Ministry of Education, right? Honestly, I didn't expect them to give me that amount. I actually entered into a deal. Later, I will tell the story. It's, it's very uh, exciting actually for me. Okay, and then even partners, collaborators, any possibilities or need to collaborate? Okay, so there is always com uh, confusion when we talk about partners, when we talk about collaboration, collaborators, people doesn't seem to know the differences. Okay, let me tell you. Collaboration is where um, the other party or organization has somehow the same voice with you. For example, you want this event, how, how do you want it to go? Uh, whether it's one day or two days, whether it should be a whole pack day or, you know, you have such high intensity level in the morning, in the evening, and then later at night, you don't have anything to do at all. So when you are collaborators, you have to understand that the organization or company has somehow quite the same voice as you. Okay? For example, when I collaborate with the Ministry of Education, so I have to listen to them. If they say, I don't agree with this kind of schedule, I want it to change, then you need to listen to them. Okay, what do I need to change? How can we, uh, you know, win-win situation? But when it comes to partnership, they are just partners. They are just helping us. For example, I invited judges to judge uh, the event, to judge the challenges. So these, these, these people, I don't have to, whether they say, oh, I don't want this event to be three days. I want this event to be one week. Okay, okay, all right. Why do I care? Because you are just a partner. Of course, like, you cannot tell them like that. But you know, 
um, this is this is how you engage with people. You make sure that they know they are only partners and they are not collaborators. So when I invite them, what I give them back is, of course, the publicity. Their logo is included in our banners, our bunting and all. And also, not only that, but I actually gave them certificates, certificates um, directly from the Ministry of Education. We have their signature. Uh, so then, you know, it's, it's, it's a plus point for them. They can actually tell the whole, uh, you know, fresh graduates later that they're actually involved in this kind of program. It's good. Their company is good. So basically, it's a win-win for both of us. Okay. So we need to always, uh, orang kata, distinguish these two uh, event partners or collaborators. It's very important. Few mistakes that uh, some of the earlier, organ earlier events that we made was that some people don't understand the differences. So what they did was, okay, they have like three to four collaborators. That is not a good, a good strategy because when you have three or four collaborators, then it's like if you have 100% of decision, right, to, 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 to decide something, it's like you have only 0.25, 25% uh, of, of voice. You understand, right? So, you know, you have equal, equal voice for, for, for organizations in, uh, in, in, in deciding whether you want to make it three days, uh, uh, one whole day, or maybe you want to do any decision. So it's, it's not a smart move. So that's why we have to understand. So at most, I would encourage is for you to have one collaborator. And that's if, if you really, really need. If you don't need, then better not. Okay? Because when you organize an event, you want it to be your way. Am I right? You don't want it to be other people's way because this is your idea, all right? So you have to understand how, how this works. Okay, so usually collaborators, um, you know, you can also ask for sponsors and even partners, you can also ask for sponsors. But you have to ensure that you distinguish the benefit. For example, if let's say um, they are also the sponsor of the event, but does it necessarily, they have, all the voices that they want, what to do with their money, right? For example, let's say I collaborated with the Ministry of Education, right? They gave me 10,000 grant for the event. They don't have the voice for, you know, what, I'm, what do I have to do with the 10K? Okay, so we, we can actually enter into a uh, discussion. We discussed and we'll see um, in, in our situation where we can actually allocate 10, that 10,000. So it's very, it's very important for you to, to differentiate stakeholders and how heavy uh, or what are roles that they are playing okay, in, in, in an event. This is very, very important. Okay, how big is the organization that will collaborate with us? This is also very important okay? because um, if, let's say, the, the organization is just uh, the smallest, uh, you know, any, any clubs or societies in the UIA, you have to ask back, why, what is the need, what is the urgency for you to collaborate with them, right? If they can be just a partnership or, you know, uh, why, why you can, why don't you just proceed with partnership? So you have to always think back of the consequences when you're trying to engage in any, any kind of event. And actually, it's not only in events, you know, in relationship, in your life. When you are having, you know, you, you, you like a, a person, the family, for example, you have to know how, how they affected you, how, how big the person is in, in, uh, impacting your life. So I'm just trying to, you know, to relate back just so that you don't think this thing is theoretical. Because honestly, for me, it's something that you learn throughout, throughout your lives. You want something that is sustainable. You want a win-win situation so that only you can enter into uh, and, and, you know, a good agreement. All right, so this is the few examples of marketing proposal. So I will share with Arifa maybe a, a bit after this so you can understand. So you see, uh, get your game on. This is my IMM SES International Challenge. Even from the layout itself, you know how, how the, the feeling of the marketing proposals give to you, right? For example, um, the IMM SES International Challenge, it gives more like a vibe of, of professional, you know, you know, you, you, you wear, you wear, how you wear uh, and, and all. And then, you know, we're trying to, with the support of Ministry of Education, we're trying to make it more impactful. For the Kasi Siswa, in the Uma, it doesn't need much more of a design. Because honestly, anywhere you stand, CSR is, has a higher probability for you to get, to get sponsorship. You don't need to worry much about CSR. Because CSR, I, I will tell you, if let's say you have 
um, one week event, you need to find uh, 10,000, for example, you shouldn't be um, scared. You just contact as many person as you want. And you never know, you can even get 15,000 within, within three days. It's, it's doable because it's, it's charity. Okay, you have to find, you just have to find the right person who are interested in charity. And then for this one, it's IIUM Trail one, as you can see, it's sport. Basically, it's sport. So we are trying to, to tell you uh, from the, the, the cover page, it's a sports event. So of course, the company that I will be approaching is maybe Red Bull or 100 plus to get, to get, to get the, you know, merchandises and all, uh, drinks, for example. So you have to know what kind of nature and whether monetary values, in-kind benefits. So these are very important because in an event, we have in-kind benefits. In-kind benefits, basically anything else, uh, as, uh, anything else except the monetary values. For example, in IIM Trail Run, we have medals, we have certificates, we have shirts. So what can you do? Maybe what you can do is you approach the shirt company and then you asking for sponsors from the shirt company because few companies and organization, they don't have a location for money, okay? So they don't have a location for money, so they will try to give you in kind. So what can we do? We try to monetize, we try to monetize whatever the values that they can give, okay? So for example, during eFest, when I was the sponsorship, what I, uh, not sponsorship, actually, yes, I not sponsorship. I was under publication and promotion, hybrid with the special task. So what I did was that I tried, because we have, um, we have quite trouble during that time. We are trying to find more and also we're trying to reduce the cost, okay? We're trying to reduce the cost. You see, um, when you are doing events, don't just think about the money three perspectives. You have also think about the, the in-kind, the in-kind benefits that you can actually transition it to money and how are you able to reduce the cost. So because we have uh, quite um, trouble with sponsorship during that time, what I did was that I approached a shirt company and the usual price would be around 38 during that time, 38 to 40 for a long sleeve and then maybe 35 to 30 for short sleeve. So I give them a quotation. I give them a quotation for participants and then for committees, I give them quotation and then I translate it into um, monetary values. For example, uh, 100, 100 participants. So that's um, 100 times by 35, around 3,000, around 3,500, right? Okay, so around 3,500. So I put it in the, in, the, in the sponsorship letter. I said that we want to request sponsorship in terms of in-kind benefits, which is uh, shirts. And then I give a quotation. So it translates around 3,000 to 500. So what we can give to them is the benefit if they sponsor for 3,500. So you can also do it for anything, drinks, um, what more? For example, in, in, in maybe, maybe in, in, in my event, not much on in kind, but for charity, you have rice, you can give cooking oils, you can give anything uh, essential, food essentials. So all these things. So you have to be, actually you have to just to be creative, you know? You just have to be creative and then you, you try to approach, you have to target your, your audience well. And then inshallah, doa, tawakal, you will get it. Okay. All right. Okay. So next. Um, okay. So as of now, do you guys have any questions that you want to ask? Yes, Anyone? welcome, Sal. Uh, ah, yes, welcome, Salam. I would like to ask, um, this is what I heard from my friends right okay. uh, like for every company like every year they have allocated a certain amount for CSR right mm. so my question is uh, won't they have uh, already have a plan on, on the allocation on what they want to use or uh, when we approach they will use the allocation okay I truly get your question I think you meant based on your nature right I mean for example um, if they have a location a located for CSR or if they mm -hmm. have specific specific events in their mind. Okay, so usually um, their allocation of budget is during the earlier of the year. Okay, so this is uh, where you have to be very, very careful because sometimes it's not that they don't they don't want to give, but they already run out of um, amount of allocated budget. For example, uh, for the events that usually taken place um, at the end of the year, 
we have IFAS usually at the end of the year, IFAS, and then even MSAS Challenge was, was um, a bit uh, late in the year. So these are the events that are most likely harder to get a uh, sponsorship. So what I can uh, suggest, because they don't usually have any specific uh, budget, they just put it for CSR. For example, maybe 10% um, of the revenue of the company, they uh, allocated it for CSR. So whoever comes out first, first come first serve basis basically, whoever comes to them first, so they will give the, the amount. Um, so when they give the amount, so they don't have the money, okay? So this is what we have to understand. It's more towards of the time that you have to, you have to kerja, you have to kerja in English, apa? What, what is kerja in English? You have to uh, 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 fight for, yes? Anyone want to help, want to help me? Because I think there are international students here, right? So catch. I have to speak English. Catch, catch. okay, thank you. Yes. Feel the opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, opportunity and catch. You have to grab it. You have to catch the opportunity as fast as you can. If you can finish um, your proposal and get it approved by earlier of the month, uh, earlier of the year, for example, March, February, even January, then that is when we will say the most um, strategic time for you to get more sponsorship. For example, my IAM MSAS International Challenge 2019, right? It's on September, but I know that if I were to approach sponsors, let's say August or July or, or you know, late, they, it's not that they don't, they don't want to give the money. It's more towards they don't have any money left. So you have to understand the, the concept. So what I did was that after we had a career week, I think like one week or two weeks after that, I already pushed. So I, 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 I finished the proposal and all because, okay, this is one, one of the things that I think it's important for you to take note. The paperwork. The paperwork is very important. If you don't have a, approval, because it's, it's work in a such a way that if you, have, if you don't have approval, it's as if that your program will never be, will never be you know, achieved. But the thing is, if only you have the money, then only you know whether it's attainable or not. Am I right? So it's very confusing, right? Because you have to ask for approval. But at the same time, the only way you know whether it will be uh, whether it can be done or not is if you have uh, if you achieve your target for example for the IMSS International Challenge oh my god it's so long I'm so tired challenge I, I will call it EC okay um, so EC for example um, our budget if I'm not mistaken was around the, I, I'm not sure I, I think around 20,000 during that time how am I going to know that I will achieve this because only after I, I approached people using the approval that I need to get from the top management university and also the deputy dean students affairs. So this is the most challenging part, the convincing part. How are you going to convince the upper management of the university to uh, approve your proposal? Your proposal have to be um, very convincing. Uh, during my time to convince them that I can make international make it international is, is very hard. But I make sure that I address them as soon as I can. For example, um, I laid out a plan. I laid out a plan. I tell them, okay, um, I actually have uh, secured, not really secured. Uh, this is my plan. I want to collaborate with the Ministry of Education so that we get more brand awareness. So people will actually more interested to join. And then this is how we'll get the participant fees. And then I targeted to collaborate with them and get grant from the, the ministry. And then I convinced them that we can actually collaborate with them because I somehow has, you know, a good plan. So this is uh, where the convincing part came. And then you have to make sure that you have a very good plan, especially when it involves a high risk um, uh, event, okay? So as for EC specifically, I sent the proposal on April, if I'm not sure, April. And then on the early of May, only then I get the, the, the approval. So what I did after I sent the, the, the proposal, I didn't wait and do nothing. I already made a, a, a progress that I can make without the approval, which includes contacting the Ministry of Education, which includes contacting potential sponsors, target uh, uh, partners, so that, hey, do you guys know that we're trying to do it international? Okay, just borak borak, sembang kopi, okay? There's no pressure, pressure in that. You just, oh, do you know that we... So I've made sure that 
even during that time, there is progress. So that when when the when uh, during my time was a Muslim, so a Muslim asked me, "How confident are you? You can make it?" And I tell you, I have a very good plan. You just ask me, sir. I have already addressed all the risks. You just tell me. So that's that's what important when you want to address and you want to convince the approval because after the approval, then only you can approach like sending all paperwork includes um, approval uh, includes what more tax exemption because because you uh, because you want to give them tax exemptions right and you want to convince them so after the approval only you can uh, ask for sponsorship because if you have that letter approval letter only then it is confirmed that this event is going to take uh, to you know to actually to occur so as long as you don't have approval letter whatever um, strategy you make is i would say it will not be that helpful if you want to to approach for sponsors because the sponsors want um, confirmation that the event will be held. Okay, so um, for example, if if you want to do IFAS this year, don't wait until October, don't wait until November, uh, uh, September only then to send a proposal. Send as fast as you can so you get approval as fast as you can. But make sure you come up with a plan. Don't just, you know, just for the sake of finishing the proposal. So you just do, do you know, ching chai, ching chai again. Just, just like that. So you have to address the risk. It's, it's always important. I, I always say to, to anyone that knows me, I would say that nothing is impossible. As long as you address the risk, as long as you laid out a good plan, it is always achievable. Trust me, it's, it's always achievable. It's just that you have to, to um, some sort of uh, have a good plan, uh, laid out a good plan. So that's the key to Ayman's uh, question. The key is to approach the sponsors as soon as you can. Okay, so I hope that that's answer your question. Uh, anyone else? Maybe you wanna ask anything else involving the nature or anything before. Okay, I'll proceed. <gasps> Already 11.37, really. How to approach? Okay, first, um, there are no clear guidelines or SOPs but I can share what I have done previously, okay? Uh, I've always, um, I've never put any pressure or, you know, when, when, when I tell someone that, that you need to, you need to, how, 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 for example, in studying, all of us, we have different kind of studying. Some people just basically look at the book uh, for one hour and they can just some sort of absorb all the thing, but other people don't. Other people need more hands-on, more practice. So it depends on you. I would say it depends on you. Even my time, there, are, there is no clear guidelines what you need to do. It's just that you have to be more creative. You have to, um, you know, sort of, um, you need also to have some, I would say, organized, um, organized system so that you will, you will be able to see who you already approach and you didn't do it redundantly, okay? So it's okay, whatever methods you want to, to use, as long as you have organized method, systematic, and it will always you will always have a clear data, whichever companies or organization that you have already approached, so that you don't do uh, unwise, unwise action. You know, approaching those who you are already approached. Okay, so this is very simple uh, because you know it's up to you how you you want to do. But for me, first I will usually check the nature. And then I usually check the nature of the program. For example, um, let's say um, Trail Run just now. It's a sport event, uh, annual sports event where people come out, join, run, and then you know you give medals, certificates. So, okay. First of all, sorry. First of all, you have to shortlist. What are the organizations or what are the individual sponsors? So organizations, of course, you have to do a bit more research on that. Uh, for example, if you want to find more sponsors on certificates, you have to find companies that, that you know, are actually uh, printing companies. Let's say you, you want to find uh, kind in kind, in kind for shirts, you go for uh, shirt companies, um, t-shirt companies, uh, drinking drinks, you go for drink companies. So if monetary value, monetary wise, you have to be more, I would say, ask around. First is always ask around, ask your seniors, as um, those that you know, anyone who have involved in, in sponsors, what are the organizations that can give a lot of money at one time? For example, for example, in UIA, the famous one would be Nama Foundation. 
I'm not sure if you are you are all familiar with it, but Nama Foundation has been um has been a sponsor for IUIM convocation since since few years back, and they big organization that can actually you know give a lot of amount of money at one point. So this is one of one of the good ways, uh, good uh, I would say strategy. Find out first on the history those who have been spending a lot of money to the UIA, because this person, this organization usually have I would say a clo close ties. So bila when whenever they heard UIA, you orang macam okay I have to sponsor. Uh, so this kind of organization find those yang ada a good relationship with uh, UIA. For example, during my time, MSAS Challenge, it was very hard for me to find sponsorship because that was the first year. First year, first event is the hardest, believe me. And during that time, it was my first time as sponsorship. I was very devastated because we even uh, figure, uh, we even, you know, um, it was, I think, one week before the event and we didn't get the amount of money that we are looking for, we are targeting. So the main bots are actually discussing to cancel to, to cancel, not, not to postpone, to cancel. You know how serious it is. Because when you say cancel, it's not only a bad image for you, yourself as the organization, organization, organizer, but also a very bad image for the whole organization, whole organization, for the whole university, you know, especially when you involve uh, participants from outside university. So this is what uh, we want to avoid the most. Cancellation. It's okay if you want to postpone. Postpone to one week, two weeks. As long as it is, it can be done. Then it's okay. But when you say cancel, yeah, I would highly suggest that you never take this into consideration. So during that time, we trying to figure out what more can we do. What more can we do? And Alhamdulillah, we actually went to um, a, a CSR program during that time. We helped um, that time Budi Siswa, we went to I think Kedah. We helped people. I think that is also one reason because you know we are helping the needy the needy people. So Allah kind of help us. Suddenly we get a call. We got a call from finance accreditation agency, and then and then they're like, "Hello, my CEO uh, told us to sponsor you guys three thousand. Just like that, just like that. All our all our troubles." And decision that we are trying, we are we are trying to figure out whether we need to cancel the program, just you know, like sort of go away. So, and you know, and do you know that the finance finance accreditation agency, we approach them, me, I approach them just by email, and I actually forgot, uh, I already forgotten that that you know, I thought that it it's basically they don't even uh, consider. I genuinely thought that they don't consider us, but. I was shocked because um, to find out that they actually, because they have a lot of, you know, board meetings and such. So that's why they need a lot of time to consider. And Alhamdulillah, just like that, they uh, give us 3,000. And we don't even do presentation. We don't have meetings. We don't have anything. It's basically I emailed. I emailed the person and then he di directed me to the person in charge. And then I emailed the documents. And then the key is to update regularly okay so okay number two call or email right direct or liaise with the person in charge this is very important that the, the 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 one i mentioned to you is number three i will i will go to that when you shortlist the organization when you shortlist the individuals you have to call or email so it's up to you sometimes the websites they don't have the contact person so you can go to email so this is what i'm trying to tell you don't never underestimate the power of email because when they read your email they actually consider okay so the thing is, um, you know, pen is mightier than the sword. It stands true. Doesn't matter whether you are working in a working place or whether you are studying, whether you are answering your exams, it always stands true because, you know, how you write, whether you are being professional, whether you are addressing what they want to hear. So these are, these are the, the, the keys. Okay. And then usually when you call or email, they will direct or liaise you with one person. So this person is the person in charge. They will be in charge of whatever things that you want to. For example, you are asking for sponsors. So this person, every time you want to, you can just call the operator and, for example, Encik Shukri, okay? Encik Shukri is the person in charge. And then every time you want to update, I want to talk to Encik Shukri, okay? Because if you ask the operator, that person doesn't know anything. So that is very important for you when you um, make the first contact, you have to know who is the person in charge. 
So every time, every time you want to update, you update with the person in charge. Don't waste your time, goes to operator, and then I am from UIA. Every time, repeat the same thing. I'm from UIA, I'm from the program. No, that is such a waste of time. Make sure you know who the contact uh, person in charge with and just liars with that person all over, all over again. Doesn't matter whether you think you are annoying, or it doesn't matter whether you think that you are uh, inconvenient for that person. No, no, don't care about that. No, just do your job. Just be consistent. And this is very important because not everyone can be consistent. That's why I say it's important for you to keep, uh, you know, documented who you approach. Like say, for example, uh, one day, you the first day you approach 10 companies. Okay. And then in two days, you update with them. Okay, hello, Chet Shukri, have you received, uh, has the board considered my request? And then, okay, uh, not yet. Okay, um, we'll wait for one week. One week, make sure you call back and ask back whether you're keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. <coughs> it's okay if they don't have any, if they don't have any reply, if you know you think it's, it's um, exhausting because this kind of attitude kind of signals to them that, oh, they are being serious about this. They are being serious about this. They are reminded me. So that person in charge will be the one who fight for your case in the board meeting. Okay? So when the board meeting, usually, you know, you can imagine a lot of people in the courts discussing whether they want to give a, a budget or not. And then they will like, this one person will like, okay, I have received a, a person from IIUM asking to request for this kind of sponsor. That person is very consistent. He's been calling me five times a day, <laughs> maybe two, uh, two times in a week to update. I think this program is very good. I, uh, so that person, you know, you will give an impression to that person. So at the end of the day, this person will be very, uh, we say, energetic, you know, for, to fight for your case. Okay? That's how you, you have to understand. So obviously, provide related documents and update critically. So when I say pen is mightier than the sword, it's not only just on the email but also on your documents. For example, your proposal, approval letter, sponsorship letter, all these kinds of documents that you, you included. Make sure that you reread, you proofread it for 1,000 times, for 10,000 times, doesn't matter. Make sure that you run it through Grammarly, make sure that you ensure that you have go through maybe 20% who are very good in English so that you don't make grammatical errors because these sort of things, it gives a signal to the to the people, to the sponsors that you are approaching, whether you are being serious or not, okay? So these are, we would say, very small signals, but it's significant enough for them to know that you are taking seriously of your job, okay? So uh, yeah, so this is very simple. Steps three, it doesn't matter how you want to organize it. As long as you have these three, I would say you are in good hands. So the key is always sustainability and consistent. All right, Penny Smarty, the Yep, see? Haha. <laughs> okay, so what is the recipe of success? Okay, so I'm going to share with you um, how I, you know, the idea of international MSAS challenge uh, come out. Okay, um, so it's basically started uh, during, okay, by the way, a bit of introduction uh, myself. I have been in the presidential secretariat for two tenure, uh, member, member of the presidential secretariat, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, and then uh, the third year, I run for the election and I have the position of a vice president one. So I am very familiar with, with the MSAS challenge, how it grows from baby and then until it, it grows up, right? Okay. So, okay. So basically about MSAS challenge, you, um, it started uh, 2017, if I'm not mistaken, 2017. And during the time, the idea, uh, the president, the president of MSAS, the idea was just to bring people and then to actually help the students to know what the industry are demanding. Because the problem, the issue is that when our students graduate, for example, they graduate in economics, they graduate in finance, they graduate in uh, accounting, they don't have the skills that the industry are demanding. So this is um, what our graduates are very hard for them to look for jobs, especially when you fresh graduates, they don't have certificates for them to say that they are good in certain skills so we want um so we you know kind of calling the industry and to help give these students a few insights of what the industry are looking for so that's what we did we did a competition we have addressing this for uh, departments we have finance accounting uh, business and also economics so we invite 
So during the time, the first year, we invite the, uh, I would say the key industry players, for example, economics, we have ideas um, for business, we have magic. Uh, for, um, I think, accounting, if I'm not mistaken, we have KPMG. I'm not, I'm not really sure, uh, three years back. Four, 2021, 21 minus 17, four, four years back, yes. I'm old. So four years back, uh, you know, the AMSA challenge, um, it's very, the idea is very, very new. So it's quite hard for us to uh, reach partners, to reach sponsors. But it's such a good idea that we think we have to still uh, go through with it. So what we did was we invited these key industry, uh, industry players. Uh, like I said, we have ideas, we have magic, we have KPMGs. And then we come up with the question. So the, the, the people, the judges will come up with questions that uh, what the industry are demanding during the time. So let's say in economics, it will be about the issues, current issue, economic issues that is going on. I think it was about industrial 4.0. I'm not really sure. And then accounting, what are the, you know, uh, the, the formatting, uh, MFRS, and then a lot of things, you know, uh, what more the, the, the industry are demanding. So we give the judging for the, we give the, the question for the judges to make. And then we invited, uh, we invited participants from outside, even outside of UIA, and then also, of course, for UIA. So because it was first year, we don't have any brand awareness. We only have one university outside from UIA participated. I think it was UUM. It's very endearing. We are very lucky to have them because they took a bus, you know, from UM, UUM, Kedah. Kedah right? is very far. So they took a bus and then uh, they joined our event. So we are very thankful to them. So unfortunately, although we have one participant from outside university, but because there are only one university, there is only one. So it is still considered as a uh, university level. And then this, during the second year, we're trying to make it national level by inviting more, um, more outside universities to join. So during the first year, we already can see what are the, this is, yes, another key point that I want you guys to take very seriously is the program report. I know that you just want your jobs to finish. You just want to make a report for the sake of finishing. Don't do that because whatever the thing that you jot down, whatever the, the, the shortcomings that happen during the event, whatever you wrote down on the program report, it will be very helpful to you know, the upcoming batches, the upcoming tenures. If you don't really um, analyze what are the shortcomings, how are you able to uh, you know, make it better, then it's very hard for the upcoming tenures to know what are the problems, how are they going to address this problem. So information, information is, is, is very important. You know, you make sure that your program report address all the shortcomings. So what we find out is, of course, the brand awareness because MSS Challenge is new and we, are, we only, um, I would say, the, the promotions is just one week, uh, quite short. The people don't have time enough to understand what it's all about. So that's what um, you know. So that's why they have they don't have any uh, much information. And although although they wanted to join, they already have other events booked. So we try to make it earlier. We try to make the promotions earlier. We try to make the brand more more strength. You know, more powerful. We approach uh, more uh, outside universities. I think during the time we get around eight. We have Intech. We have UITM Shalam. We have a lot of other universities uh, during the time and it become a, you know, a national level. So during the third time, my time, I know that this event could go higher. Actually, we, are, we already planned to collaborate with the ministry during national, you know, the, the second year, but it was very hard because it's second year. It's like, you know, toddler, the one I show you in the slides, the toddler, you just, you know, just, just, um, just growing up. So it's very hard for us to convince that this event will be successful. So that's why in my third year, I try very hard. And I know that one of the things very important is on the brand awareness. You know, I get a lot of questions asking me, why don't you wait? Why don't you wait for uh, another three years, another five years, then make it international? Why don't you take step by step? If I didn't do international back then, we will never know that we can achieve it. Am I right? We will never know that we can actually do it. 
because not everyone wants to go through all the hustling, all through exhausting, uh, you know, engaging, engaging, meeting people. It's very, sometimes you feel like, am I really a student or I'm just part-time student? Sometimes you wonder because, you know, you, you think about society all the time. Not everyone wants to do it. And I know, and I am very glad I did it back then, 2019, because now we have COVID. Now we have a lot of things to do. We don't even know when you guys can do it. Maybe, you know, maybe you can do it this year, inshallah, and maybe not. But at least we, we have this um, benchmark that we know we can actually go further from this benchmark. So it was very hard to convince. And of course, um, uh, when you set an event, the most, you know, the dilemma, the dilemma is that whether you want to take skillful person and you know the job will be done, or you want to take those who doesn't have experiences, but very hardworking, but you have the risk of it's not being done and you have to cover for them. So this is the dilemma that, you know, um, every one of you will one day when you become a program manager, where you become a leader for you to assemble a team. This is very hard. And during my time, I tried to help people to understand more. So what I did was that a lot of the, the committees were new, were very fresh. So I didn't, I didn't, back then I was like, it's okay, I can handle, it's okay, I can handle. It's okay, a few people that are skillful can handle. But the truth is, it's quite hard, you know? So you always have to try to balance this out, maybe 50-50 or maybe 70-30 if, if you want to go further. This is, I would say, the biggest dilemma, okay? But as you go through, you will, you will know um how how proportion how what is the importance of you know you cannot um orang kata satisfy everyone you cannot satisfy everyone but uh you know there's always uh, consequences and and pros for that so that's for uh MSA challenge 2019 so what happened was um i know that we need brand awareness and one of the thing is for it to be known and for it you know usually when we go to let's say we want a scholarship with another country it's a country's punya scholarship, so people akan lagi macam, oh, uh, it's more orang kata lagi, lagi hebat lah, lagi berat lah. So that's, that's what I want to do. When I collaborate with the Ministry of Education, it's more towards saying that this program is actually approved by them. They don't have to say that, the, we don't have to say that the program is approved by the ministry, but we will know somehow through the, you know, through the, they collaborating, meaning that they are supporting, meaning that the, this program is good. So that's why I'm trying to send the message that this program is good enough. And of course, um, because Ministry of Education has a lot of um, database, so they can just, um, you know, reach out to a lot of deans, a lot of principals as fast as they can. They have the data, they have the credibility. People believe the government more than they believe me, more than they believe MSS UIA, a very small organization in the UIA. So you have to know uh, the, the brand awareness itself and the, cred the credibility of, of your event. What, what does it prove? Uh, what does it worth? Okay. So if you ask me how I uh, get to the Ministry of Education, it's, I would say, networking. So it's important for you to start networking now. No matter whether you are just um, special tasks in, let's say, uh, today's event, MKMH, you are just a papro. Oh, I'm, I'm nobody in this event. I'm just catering. No, never think that. Whatever roles that you play, it's never about the role itself. You know, it's about what you are doing with the role. For example, even if you are vice president or even if you are the program manager, but there's always a difference between the people who are, you know, whether first program manager of the event, second program manager of the event, there's always differences what you are doing with your role. For example, catering, you cater to the VIPs, you give them drinks. So this is the time for you to networking. Never underestimate the power of networking. You, know, you met new people every day. You met, uh, let's say, uh, you met, for example, during my time, there is uh, the student union was a very new idea. We had conference on the establishment of student union. We invited Dr. Zaid during the time he was the director of um, uh, Bahagia Mahasiswa Halitik, the, the Department of Haidik higher education lah. Jabatan Pendidikan Tinggi. Ah, during that time, Jabatan Pendidikan Tinggi, JPT. Um, he was the director. 
and then he was invited for a speech, I would say, uh, more of a talk on the conference of establishment of student union. And during the time, I was the public relation, so I engaged a lot with the with the with him. Not really lah, more towards macam you know usher him to the seat, usher him to give speech. I just smile, this kind of thing. But what I find out is that this person, he has such a good relationship with my lecturer, which is Prof Rosita. If you guys know her, uh, the one in the wheelchair, she's she's a very good lecturer. My favorite lecturer actually. She uh, teaches economics. Um, so that is when I noticed that, oh, they have such a good relationship. So Dr. Zai is my key to, um, you know, to fight for me in the, in the Ministry of Education. So what I did was that I approached uh, Prof. Dr. Rosita. I approached Prof. Rosita and I told him about my idea. I told him that I want to collaborate with the Ministry of Education. What does usually... Uh, they want so I have like copy session with Dr. Rosita and then she is the one actually encourages me dia macam you know boleh je tak ada masalah just come up with a proposal and then and, 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 and she told me lah and then she helped me a lot so you know it started off just with an idea a conversation and then what happened is that Prof. Dr. Rosita too uh, she accompanied me she uh, you know during my presentation I presented my proposal towards uh, Dr. Zaid. And the funniest thing was that during the time when I presented, it's just that I fight for uh, collaboration in terms, of, um, in terms of supporting, meaning that I want to include Ministry of Education punya logo so that we give weight to the MSAS Challenge punya event so that people are more like, oh, this program is under Ministry of Education, right? So that's what my intention was the first place. And I didn't expect much on the on the grant because I know it's very hard to get government grant. Tapi Prof Rosita lah macam, you guys don't want to sponsor, how much you guys can sponsor it? And during the time, Dr. Zaid was like, okay, I give you a challenge. Uh, he said that if we, if my organization during the time, if my team can find 10,000 within one month, they akan bagi the same amount. For example, if the, the, the cap is 10,000, but you know, if we find 5,000, they can bagi 5,000. If we can find 7,000, they can bagi 7,000. And um, you guys try guess how, how, how much do I manage to find within, within one month? 11,000. I was so happy because, you know, it's not that, uh, and it's not even one month, it's like three weeks. So I am very happy when I get that because. You have to give me ten thousand because you promised me, right? So yeah, he so he so he has to give me ten thousand grant. So that's how I secured um, a grant from the Ministry of Education and that ten thousand. So I would say that it's not it's not easy. I would say it's a quite a hellish, hellish. Okay, maybe it's a bit sensitive. It's quite a a, a very exhausting journey, but it's it's worth it's worth it. Um, you know, um, when we secured the deal, it was kind of like. I had doubts. I was like, the most we can find is maybe 5,000. The most we can find maybe 3,000 in one month, right? But um, somehow I think because it's already the third year, and of course, again, negotiate. You have to negotiate, negotiate. You have to understand. And during my presentation, when I approached the sponsors, I said to them that, oh, this program has already been approved by the Ministry of Education. We are just waiting uh, for them to give us uh, the collaboration letter. So we are going to collaborate, collaborate with the Ministry of Education. So that is the, the way, the way that I'm talking about, um, you know, the, the brand awareness. So I'm, I'm telling you this, not to boast, to react, no, 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 no. I'm trying to inspire you that, you know, you can um, figure out, you can be more creative. And as long as you're trying to find some win-win, win-win. In Ministry of Education during that time, uh, they're also aware of this problem. They're also aware of the problem where fresh graduates are having a hard time finding jobs and then, you know, their programs are not as impactful as in, uh, and really impactful. So we're trying to make our program as impactful as possible. We're trying to attract as many as possible. So that's when they are like, okay, we can proceed with this. Yeah, so I just wanted to share with you um, the MSA Challenge journey. It, it is not a straight one. 
um, but again, it's more towards negotiate how how you negotiate with with uh, with the uh, with an organization or or you know company. Okay, that is the uh, that is the 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 good the good um, story I can share. The bad story is, um, you know, you can have teh tare or kopi. I don't really mind. You know, just uh, uh, you know, it's 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 relaxation lah. I just want to share my experiences. So I have this company, right? I said finance accreditation agency. The first year, uh, Chet Shukri is very supportive. Whenever we have events, we we kind of of invited him to our our event, and we have a very good relationship with him. However, on the second uh, year, uh, I'm such challenge, which is on 2018, when we want to invite um, judges for finance, I suggested that we go for finance accreditation agency. But my oh. I forgot to tell you. During my first year, I was the sponsorship. Second year, I was the financial controller, and the third year, I was the program manager. So during my time when I was the financial controller, I told my main board, my PM, I want FAA to be the judge for the finance. I want to give them this this slot, and then my program manager don't want. He wants a Bursa Young Investor Club. I don't understand. I don't understand. At that time, I was a bit mad, but I was like, okay, he's my program manager, so what can I do? So that is when I say that you have to, you know, think a lot when you want to collaborate with other organizations because this sort of things will happen. It's it's conflict of interest for me. It's because that PM has a good relationship with the BYIC. Yeah, I was quite, I was very mad during that time. So I told Chit Shukri, and then he was, um, so there are two things that I did actually. The first, I said that um, my program manager uh, wants to give it to Bursa Youth Investor Club, and then the second one, I told him to get in touch in anything related to sponsorship. Uh, I pass to sponsorship because I am the financial financial controller. Remember, so I asked him oh, to. Sister Sasabila. Uh, yeah. Sorry for interrupting, but we still have a Q and A session. Oh, okay. All right. It's okay. But I will just it. end. I will just end this story. Okay. Okay. So okay. About, sure. uh, okay. Okay, thank you, Arif. Okay, uh, so where where am I? Okay, so what happened was um, I gave it to sponsorship team, and he actually was the president during the time. So sebenarnya dia lagi more credible lah than me. But then, you know what Encik Shukri said? Don't pass me to anyone. <laughs> and then I was like, and then I don't think, and then he said. I don't think I'm interested to 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 sponsor or you know actually get involved with MSAS. So I was very devastated during that time, and you know, um, but during my third year, I tried to somehow, like, um, orang kata trying to mend the the relationship again. So I met her him for session, coffee session, and then also I I try lah, I try to you know get him on board i'm telling him that this time it's going to be different it's th- this time you tell me what you want and i try to i try to you know fix things up and then um at the end of the day and i said actually because so at the end of the day um not only they partnered with us their ceo datang semua help us but they actually um bagi sponsorship six thousand eight hundred for for the third year dia bagi apa for for the winners lah the winners punya cash prizes so um what i learned through the hard way is that when you uh, engage uh, when you engage pers- professionally with person for example in in during this time i engage dengan aiman dengan arifah kan dia orang comes to me we, we we discuss things so i will always suspect that whenever i come to mss this tenure, the orang lah akan cakap uh, macam tu. So this is how organization work. It doesn't matter who or what position you are in the company. Below you already have this engagement. They expect you to always uh, attend to them. Okay? They macam I'm says me, I'm says me, I'm macam tu. So everywhere, every time after this, when you engage, um, you have to know about this lah. Okay? All right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Busan. All right. So I think that's all from me. Um, Q and A session. Anyone have any uh, questions? Assalamualaikum, Sal Sabila. Ah, Waalaikum salam. Uh, I have a question. As yes. you know, the ongoing pandemic, the ongoing pandemic. So, will the company agree to sponsor any of our events? 
And in the online fair, most of our events are online. And will they agree to sponsor it? Okay. Uh, so honestly, I cannot share anything because I've, I've never, you know, secured any sponsorship during, again, during this time. But um, I would say they have lower location and I would say it's a bit tough for you to fight for it. But again, it's not impossible. What you can do, my suggestion is that um, you sort of using whatever the norms that we are currently using. For example, if uh, tahun-tahun dulu, when it's normal, we have coffee session, we talk, and normal, normal. Eh? Sekarang ni, because Zoom is normal, Google Meet is normal. So what you can do, maybe you can try to fix a presentation to Zoom, presentation to Google Meet, you know, ask them if you want to know more about our project, we can present to you uh, through Google Meet, through Zoom. So you use these norms to get to know them better. And I would say it's, it will be quite advantageous to you because not everyone is um, tech savvy. Not everyone is, is, you know, orang kata selesa dengan, dengan dunia maya with this digital life we are, uh, we are living. But because you guys have been one year through online classes, one year engaging through Zoom, Google Meet, so you guys have the upper hand. All right. So trying to be more engaged through digital, try to find out how you guys can actually connect with them. Okay. So try to use them uh, to your benefit lah because they're on work from home. So that is, that is one of the suggestions I can give. About emails, um, I would suggest uh, usually high likely for them because they receive a lot of emails every day. They receive a lot of emails every day. So I would, high, high, uh, I would suggest to you guys send an email whether Monday or Tuesday and it's early of the, the day. For example, 8.55, schedule sent, 8.55 or 9 a.m. So that when they go, go to their office, the first email, 9, when they you know, open up their office, yours would be on top. Okay? Jangan hantar, don't send 5 p.m., 4.30 p.m., 3 p.m. That is not smart, not wise, because they have a lot of emails and you guys will be end up, tak tahulah, rambel-jambel sampai ke tengah mana. So I would suggest schedule sent. And then make it professionals. I can and then I will send. I think I will send to Arifa example of how you you email sponsors. Make sure you make it professional. Make sure you uh, number the document one two three four. And then make sure no no grammatical errors, no uh, typos. Nah. Like I said, proofread seribu kali pun seribu kali lah. Okay, juling pun juling lah. But you have to make sure that you are very uh, particular about that. Okay, I, 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 inshallah, inshallah, it will be okay. Good luck, Faiza. Whatever your sponsors you are looking for. Okay, anyone else? Uh, me. Ah, okay. Hi, yes. Okay, so uh, may I know uh, whether where the money from the sponsorship goes to? What I mean is uh, whether the money is transferred directly to an individual account or to UIA's account? Oh, okay. Um, that's the thing. Uh, sorry, ada orang nak cakap ke? Okay, tak ada eh. Alright. Uh, when you want to give tax exemption, when you want to give tax exemption, the money has to go through the UIA account. Kalau they go towards individual, tak kisahlah individual mana-mana pun, for example, DDSA, rector or anyone, they won't get these tax exemptions. The only way for them to get tax exemption is for them to transfer into a bank UIA account. Okay? So I'm not I'm not I'm not sure kalau the the previous uh, batches or tenure already has uh, told you about the procedure tapi just just to share a brief lah um, so what happened is there are a lot of ways for companies to transfer duit it's either they bagi cash in bulk 10000 or they transfer to you 10000 into bank UIA account or let's say they want to give invoice uh, dia orang boleh bagi invoice juga cash invoice so what you need to do is, let's say, if they don't cash, you need to cash into bank UIA account. You need to cash uh, into bank UIA account. You have this, this uh, bank UIA account. And then you have to ask. Uh, usually, this is one of the drawbacks. Uh, one of the drawbacks for sponsors. You will get after you send the report. Okay. So during the event, Nak tak nak, memang you have to use your organization's money dulu. Memang you used to borrow-borrow around from DDSA. So usually memang dia akan roll out, roll out your money. So it's very important waktu earlier of the earlier of the year, 
when you guys have bought meeting kan the whole second semua ada meeting tahu which one kau nak guna uh, you guys want to allocate first if this event needs um advance money allocate this first and when is the exact time you will get that money back you know how you have to know how to rolling your money you have to know which that you can uh give and then which you can actually uh wait for a moment for example catering catering if you can proceed for quotation then proceed with quotation jangan guna cash okay selagi as long as you can avoid using cash try to avoid it that that would be best because once you uh cash out there's no way there's no way to turn back the only way is to wait for the money to come back okay so you have to understand how how the rolling works so bila you nak run a, a, a big event let's say a big event requires 20000s of sponsorship 20000s sponsorship although you get it you won't get it before the program unless if you dapat sponsorship um ahead of it let's say um maybe four to five months before then maybe maybe you will get that money before the event but usually usually you will get that money after the event okay so you have to be orang kata bijaklah macam let's say for example uh, shirts um if you can get a company that you can buy using a quotation you can pay later pakai invoice semua send proceed with that company okay try to avoid a company yang guna cash it will especially big events kalau small events yang macam mkmh ni i think budget 500000 je kan macam tu kan very very low budget so for this one it's okay if you want to use cash petty cash it's okay but when it involves 20000 when it was 30000 and there are a lot of a lot of uh orang kata process for the money to be transferred all right so yes cash um basically whatever do it tax exemption you have to go through um the the uia punya account so let's say for example dia nak juga transfer kepada arif dia kata arif fc so i i trust him for example kan arif fc kan sekali lain proposition so dia nak transfer to you juga so what you did is you transfer ke bank muamalat punya operating account and then you get the the slip and then you can go to finance division the one uh, dekat library dekat library uia tu ada satu kecil uh, very small finance division because i think there are five finance division ke four finance division that one is the second one i think finance division dekat uh, area the one in uh, earlier library so that one is the one yang process society punya funding which includes tax exemption which includes invoice so kalau let's say the uh, you know the sponsor bagi invoice then you have to give invoice kepada to the finance division for them to process invoice takes longer time to process so avoid invoice tapi usually sometimes company memang kadang-kadang guna invoice kan cannot cannot nilah tapi as long as you can use uh, transfer then use transfer yes do i answer your question yes thank you so okay. much okay welcome i takut cakap banyak kan takut takut tertinggal all right so um any any more question and uh, anything else i think um banyak yang i already dah Uh, address from the questions yang uh, Aiman bagi I think so but if you if you have this is this is the time for you to ask me ting 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 lepas ni ada tak reply <laughs> tapi honestly from me I would say sponsorship memang tak senang you will need people yang uh, jiwa kental you know resilient resilient people because um although you went to engagement although you went to presentation uh, presentation maybe i would say you have a good relationship with that company but somehow dia tak nak bagi dia merajuk uh, then you don't get anything so it's very hard to uh, to you know to expect but it's always good to address the risk upper risk and trying to uh, lower this risk lah okay and uh, networking networking is very okay uh what what's more i can i can i can share with you guys yeah so this basically um highest in the record so far 27 8000 last 
year, last two years, 10,000 in 4,000 in, in 2017. It's a long journey to understand how, how this thing works. But once you get the gist of it, once you get um, you know, the simple steps, it should be okay. During my time, uh, in order to ensure that we don't approach the same company uh, twice or more than twice, we come up with a, some sort of numbering system. So in our sponsorship letter, in our sponsorship letter, we have the referral number. So we change the referral number and then we tulis lah, um, we jot down what are the referral number. So these are the companies that we have approached. It's always good to come up with the system, tapi don't be too rigid as well on the system. Be more creative. Apa-apa je yang you guys tak pernah terfikir boleh sponsor. For example, um, uh, apa lagi? Uh, maybe piala, you know, medals for the first place, uh, for the winners, kan? You can approach companies producing medals and try to convert it into monetary values. Berapa banyak medals yang nak? For example, 100 medals. So they cannot provide you with money. But when they give you these in-kind benefits, they are considered as giving you how much amount of money. Depends on the monetary values that you are already converted. I try to find one marketing proposal je, eh, so that you guys um, get, get a clear. I try to make this session macam tak terlalu technical lah sebab, uh, you know, me, I don't like also too technical. Nanti. Because, you know, other people of, of uh, ni tak tahu tidur ke bangun. <laughs> that is one of um, disadvantage lah. Okay. Apa tadi? Okay, let me see. Jauh, eh. um, other than that, any question? You guys nak tanya? But I would say, jangan takut lah. Jangan takut sebab kan online, sebab kan pandemic. Uh, you jadi takut nak approach, you know, you become scared. I would say as long as you work for it, as long as you are consistent, jadi ustazah sekejap, Allah will see your effort and they can help you. Okay, so you don't don't ever macam discourage because of, of, of these things happening. So korang takut kan. I would say jangan. And then when people tell you that you cannot do, prove them wrong. Okay, prove them wrong, come out with, 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 the, good, with the good outcome. So diorang pun macam, oh, okay, they are wrong. Uh, Sister Sasa Villa, yeah. I think uh, unfortunately we must stop now because ah, okay. some of their brothers want to uh, go to Friday prayers, I guess. Okay, okay, it's okay. So thank I'll share so the documents to you guys. Okay. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone. Have a good day ahead. Okay, bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. MC. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Sasabila, for your valuable sharing. Those uh, suggestions, um, recipe of success, experiences, inspiring stories, inshallah, will benefit us in finding sponsors for up upcoming programs. Inshallah. So with that, we have come to the end of our ceremony. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to apologize for any shortcomings throughout this event. We look forward to have a smooth and nice ride this tenor with you, inshallah. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to express our gratitude to all of the participants today. And don't forget to fill in the feedback form to mark your attendance. Um, please don't leave yet as we will be taking pictures with all of you. So please stay for a while and we we'll appreciate if all of you can turn on the camera. Okay. Prep that ready. Okay, in the count of one, two, three, I will screenshot, okay? Uh, wait.
Okay, guys. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. Okay, uh, maybe freestyle or any other post. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, last, last. All right, one, two, three. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. All right, that's all for today. We will end this session with Tasbih Kipar and Surah al -As. You may leave the session. Thank you. Uh, MC, can you remind the participants about the feedback form? All right, um, the participants, please don't forget to fill in the feedback form to mark your attendance. You can see at the chat, chat box. Arif, can you please send the attendance link? Oh, sorry, send what? Attendance link. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, the attendance link and the feedback form is just the same. Yeah, because um, someone just private messaged me. Okay, it's okay. Thank you.